This is your last chance to get yourself a book and support a creator that you maybe like a little bit. With only four days left, Stibble's Codex of Companions has seen a lot of support and praise, and we're dead set on meeting everyone's expectations for a fantastic book full of fantasy pets. Right now, we're looking at over a hundred companions. Spells, feats, familiars for every class, mechanics for loyalty and friendship, a deck of quick reference stat cards, chibis, plushies, paintable miniatures for combat, a special edition hardback, free posters for backers, and a final goal we revealed yesterday. A special Mimcat-themed deck box exclusive to everyone who backs the Kickstarter before it ends. So go check it out, please consider backing, and enjoy the video. Did you know that the Mesoamerican people used pyramids to sacrifice poor people to their gods? The Aztec, Mayan, Olomec, Incompotec, Zapotec, Mixtec, Technotec, and Toltec societies were massive, spent way too much time sculpting, like, holy shit, and sacrificed people maybe just a little too much. And that's where we get the Yuanti. Honestly, call them what you like. Yontai, Yonti, your auntie, you and me, just kidding. Unless. These guys ruled the world in old human days and pretty much owned half the planet. They partake in two unholy rituals that made every other culture go, hey wait, these guys suck. The first are the classic, entirely original bad guy things that every monster in D&D does. Take slaves, torture people for personal reasons, and have other hubris. The second is not a common one. You see, the Yuan-Ti were all about pragmatism. Cold calculation, unfueled by emotions, centered on expanse and control. So these ancient monkeys worshipped the gods of the snakes and revered the practical, unethical wisdom that, uh, I guess snakes have? After two billion years of prayers and sacrifices, the snake gods finally caught notice and were like, Oh, what? You, you serve us? That's, that's cool or whatever. I, I, I guess eat each other. That'd be pretty funny. So they dove into cannibalism, doubled sacrifices, and got rewarded with snake magic. But that isn't their second sin. Being fueled by dark magic, some Yuan-Ti sorcerers looked at snakes and... Uh... Yes, they put their noodles in danger noodles. The book says so. Let that sink in. Just don't picture it. Now we have unholy half-snake people. These days, every Snurson shares a few traits. First, their serpentine philosophy teaches them to be cold, emotionless, focused, and completely unable to be manipulated. Unless you use magic, because magic. Second, honor is another word for stupidity to them. They know that the meta is nighttime ambushes and giant falling rocks, and they don't care what anyone thinks about their tactics, because they win. And lastly, they're all Satan from the Garden of Eden. This angle of their personality is actually my favorite. They know the gods they worship are snake gods, not Yuanti gods or people gods. So they don't really have any actual faith at all. They just know that divine beings grant the most power. Every Yuanti fights for themselves, and all they want is to be as powerful as a god. They also don't have emotions, but they fully understand them, so they use them as tools to manipulate humanoids, saying literally anything to influence a creature into working for the lying snake's personal gain. Here are two adventuring rules. Rule number one, always trust a flump. Rule number two, never trust a Yuan-Ti. I just think it's interesting that they serve gods they don't really care about at all, and the ritual of cannibalism is kind of symbolic. They want to devour and replace the gods that they currently serve. That's poetic evil. Oh geez, I lost my place. Okay, so being gross snake men who eat people and eggs and gods oh made everyone revolt against them, and they fell back to ancient ziggurats to be snakes in secret. Even though every scaly Aztec Satanist wants to rule the world, they have their own functioning hierarchy with different levels of power. At the top of their cast are Anathema. These multi-snake dudes used to be abominations, then they personally strangled like 350 snakes in a row, and then bathed in the blood of someone they didn't like. People don't like them because they're big bullies, so they try not to let a guy become one. Next up are Abominations. What, what a kind, fitting name. These bootleg lindworms are 80% snake and 20% chad, being physically as close as the snake gods want without just being a f***ing anaconda. They hang out at the top of ziggurats, eat people right off the vine, and conduct evil rituals by the dozens. Pit fiends. Wait, no. Armpit masters. They remove their armpits to get more snakes, and are good at taking the longer approach to achieve their goals. They also like politics. 
Malazans, who I assume are second in command solely based on alphabetical order, are like 40 to 50% snake. They vary a bit, from a human with a snake head, to a guy with snarms, to a guy with a big wiggly leg. And I'll make up a couple more. A guy with snakes for eyes and fingers. A guy with a snake for a dongle. A snake with a guy for a tongue. And a snake with guys for arms. They all use simple magic to make winning fights easier, and that's really their shtick. Then we have an offshoot of lady servants to a specific god, Dendar the Night Knight Guy, called the Nightmare Speakers. Dendar feeds them dark nightmares, and then they wake up, and then they make those nightmares come true, because it makes sense. These fine ladies will traumatize and torture you more effectively than half the monster roster. The second offshoot are Mind Whisperers, dudes who work for Seth that sneak around and lie a bunch. Classic schemers, they'll do anything to get ahead no matter what, like Snake Littlefinger. Also, all of the above mentioned can become a snake if they want, and they can make friends with snakes and then summon them during battle, and then you die. Then at the bottom, we have stupid dumb babies who can't even turn into a snake, the Purebloods. They're just people with snake traits who can't really do much other than wear big trench coats, run into town with a big sack, and then kidnap people. Then even less than the bottom are brood guards, people who got turned into what is essentially a hulking lizard zombie. They're dumb, they take orders from their creators, and they will never again be what they used to. A bit unlike the flow of other videos, the last thing I can think to cover is a few of their deities. The aforementioned Dendar, the Night Serpent. It's like a big snake that eats bad dreams and bad feelings, so her servants just cause more of that shit. Merushauk, the armpit god. He's asleep. Seth, the main dude. He's like another Satan. He pretended to be that sleeping dude to get more followers, and he's now like the CEO of Snake Town. Some people think that he used to be a snake guy who actually ate the armpit god, but that's just a theory. A snake theory. That's basically Yuan Tua Titi Yuan Tua Yuan Tai. Oh, holy crap, do you see that? I think that's Stipple's Codex of Companions. What's it doing? Is it, is it running away? What, where'd it go? I think it went into the description of the video. That's crazy.